You haven't eaten your crusts. I don't like the crusts. I don't want to eat them. You gotta eat your crusts. That's the healthy part. My dad said you have to eat the crust because it's actually the healthy part. You gotta eat the crust. That's the healthy part. Oh, dude, my dad told me you have to eat the crust. It's the healthy part. What? That's definitely not true. The crust is the same as the rest of the bread. <laughs> I, I love like that slow piano, like Frenchy Pixar music that he put in the background. <laughs> so good. So good. <laughs> Anyways, with that, <laughs> we want to welcome you to the crust of Webflow content on the web. Another episode of the Webflow Show. Where, as you can see, we take not very much seriously except for Webflow. Uh, as always... It's your boy, Hein and Matt. What up? And we're here to drop another banger of an episode for you today. No skips. Swear to God. And a little known fact about today's episode is voted most likely to succeed by its peers. I would definitely, yeah, I, I would definitely say it's the crust that is the loaf of bread that is Westflow content. So, uh, so if you enjoy the crust as much as Matt and I do, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the sh to the show. Hit the button. Uh, watch some future content, uh, and just make sure you don't miss out on anything related to design, Webflow, and and no code. So, with that, let's go ahead and start the show. Um, and yeah, just want to see what's going on. What's going on in your world right now, Matt? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just had the the beautiful part of uh, of of being a little bit remote and in, not in my home studio of uh, losing you for a few seconds. So we got a little dead air action early in the episode. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, just uh, traveling around a, a, a bit, uh, do, doing some work, uh, trying it from a different location. Maybe jump into that a little bit more later. Hopefully, you're traveling uh, around like David Carradine in uh, Kung Fu and solving crimes and. Well, that's the goal. I don't, that's my goal. I don't know. I don't know if my route has kicks are there yet, but we'll get there. Um, but yeah, like, uh, to, to jump back into the, the cold open today, uh, you know, we're very crust centric show today, but, uh, I wanted to check in with you. Is, do you have any, any words of wisdom that you got growing up or even, even in adulthood that you just like pre Google, you're just like, that sounds true enough. That sounds true enough. I'm just going to follow that blindly. Seven and up cures everything. Seven up in Robitussin. That's that's the word of the wisdom I got from my mom. She's like, "Oh, you're not feeling great? Oh, crack a little bit of a can of Seven Up." I was like, "That's okay. a great one." They they <laughs> definitely covered that at the like uh, international mom convention. I definitely like you know Seven Up. Uh, growing up in the, in the Midwest, well, we can get hit with Verners mm. from time to time as a as a Seven Up uh, type remedy. I, I would say uh, Verner's will definitely make me more sick. That stuff is gross. I do not like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it goes a little harder on the sugar, it feels like. I don't know. Uh, there's another There's another thing I'm presenting to you as a fact that probably isn't. I think that is fact. Uh, I'm, I could be wrong. We, someone should look this up. But <laughs> I have heard that 7-Up is way worse for you than like Coke. Because I, the the clearer the clearer the the soda, the worse it is. That's what I've heard. But it could be the same thing as like as true as Mountain Dew causing your your dick to shrink. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna take that just as fact. Uh, that that's my answer to my own question. Is yeah. like literally the thing that you just told me. Like I'll never look that up. I'm just gonna start perpetuating uh, that as fact to everyone that will listen to me. Yeah, that, that was another piece of word of wisdom was that if you drink Mountain Dew, your your male parts will slowly be reabsorbed back into your body. Yeah, I think <laughs> anything could be true as it pertains to Mountain Dew. Like, when you, it is you, want to get to, you want to get in the colors of sodas. I mean, you, you never want to pour Mountain Dew in a clear glass. Like, just yeah. take it right out of the can because you're going to, you have to like freeze probably. Yeah, I don't know how they make Mountain Dew. I don't know if I want to ever know. It, it has to be well, from like the Dew of Mountains, Hein. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you don't know how to make it? It just naturally like comes off mountains. I, I envision it being like the uh, videos of Chicken McNuggets coming out of that, that pink 
goo and they become nuggets. I assume it's something like that. Yeah, I think the uh, same same uh, same like brain brainstorming session uh, probably for <laughs> both of those things. But but anyways, that's enough like ridiculous like off the rails banter. We should go Is ahead it? and get yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> again. If you are enjoying this weirdness, please do subscribe. There's going to be plenty more of this for you, um, but also plenty more will be great content related to marketing and Webflow. And in this case, we're going to talk about a little bit of both. Uh, so we're going to jump right into our main event, which is how your CMS is ruining your vibes, your Webflow experiences, and maybe even your life a little bit. So uh, that's pretty heavy right there, especially after, after all the weird banter we've been having. Uh, but we're going to go hard here on, on this. So we're going to be covering things like issues with some OG CMSs, aka content management systems, how using too much code is going to drive your marketing team absolutely nuts, like Jack Nicholson in, uh, I don't know why I lost my mind on this, like I don't remember the movie that he was in, <laughs> that, that drove him absolutely nuts uh, in the hotel, oh, The Shining, and getting them way too, and getting your marketing team way too excited to be hitting up uh, Wednesday's happy hour at, outside of happy hour times. <laughs> yeah. And I think the Wednesday happy hour, especially like if they're looking at that Wednesday happy hour, <laughs> like it's not, not going good. A good Friday happy hour. Totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're also at last, we're going to cover how and why Webflow's visual approach to CMS can make your life so much easier. And maybe you hit that happy hour out of pure joy and happiness, not because That's of right. hate and for your life. So <laughs> there are let's go ahead. two types of happy hours in life, obviously. <laughs> yeah. What is happy and what is not so much so happy. So let's go ahead and jump right into things. So Matt, um, I was just going to just, you and I both love constraints. We love the idea of limits. They are great uh, in their own ways, but we, I think we can agree that setting arbitrary ones that you get from templates, they're not really the best kind of limits, are they? No, no. And it, like you mentioned, it, constraints are something we talk about all the time. Like we're a two-person agency, like what can we do? What can't we do? Um, and so much of it is about at least understanding what your constraints are. Like uh, we've probably all done things where um, we just don't even think about the constraints. We just sort of like do things and then we hit our limits uh, and like that causes frustration. But like you mentioned, like we talk about constraints and like they're, they are a great guide so long as you get to choose them, um, or at least that you're aware of them. So, you know, uh, limits are good, but not arbitrary ones that like were made up by a template you bought that one time when you were deciding what your website should look like. So um, just to touch a little bit more on CMSs, like again, like uh, this is usually what powers your blog. You know, like that's the most like layperson uh, use of these things. Um, it's, it's mostly just how you make blogs, how you make repeatable content and how you manage that content. Um, the, you know, this is really where the most traditional one, uh, WordPress, this is really where they kind of like, you know, took over the whole internet uh, was by making a content management system and really doing it uh, better than anybody else had at the time. Um, and making it easy to just make a new blog over and over that looked, you know, good enough or felt uh, it worked inside the template that, that you had, uh, which was revolutionary back in the day uh, to be able to just do that and just think about writing and not having to do anything else. And those are the types of providers that we see like constantly all over the place to the ones that we're all most familiar with. But there's newer players that you kind of hear, they're, they're called headless uh, CMSs. Um, Contentful, I think, is one of the most well-known ones in there. And they give you um, more control. Uh, and this is one of those things, like we're removing some constraints now, and this is where it can be good or bad, depending on you know what skills, what tools you have, what resources you have. Um, but they require front-end devs to kind of make all the magic happen. Um, you, they're powered by APIs, which starts to bring in you know engineering, dev resources, at least people who are well-versed in what APIs can do how to connect them and things like that to pull information from different sources um, and those types of things like those platforms like Contentful, like they have some free plans, but as soon as you kind of get going, uh, you're looking at something like $300 a month uh, plan once you have all those other resources in place. So it can be a lot for places to spend $300 a month. Yeah. Like just, just to do it. And like, obviously, you know, like that's money well spent if, if that's what you're doing, but uh, it's an, it's a, 
a lot of money that also requires you to have a lot of resources to do that. So there's usually very specific reasons or your team set up to kind of do those things or already prepared to go down that path. So less constraints kind of, but a ton of constraints if you don't have the resources to power that functionality. Yeah, that one feels like we're, you're just shuffling constraints from one thing to another thing um, with the headless CMSs. So yeah. The traditional the, CMS. Yeah, that gets into like making sure your constraints aren't arbitrary, right? Because you could just see a really good looking website and, you know, Hein tells me like it was just built on Contentful and you're like, oh, this looks beautiful. And you're like, you know, you just hear the kind of like cliff notes of it, you know, like we manage our blog from there and do all these things, but there's a lot going on there, both on the front and back end of the kind of like headless players. Um, so they remove almost all constraints, right? But um, you better have knowledge of to, uh, to, to really make it work well, especially from the marketing perspective uh, so that you don't have over-reliance there. Um, yeah, and I can but, say from our prior experience of working with both that uh, the happy hours that we're going to after that, we're not very happy. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, YouTube video watching to be like, what is this? Like, how, how does that happen? Uh, oh, it's not coming over. It's not coming over. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff like that. So tons of testing and stuff like that that you have to do. Um, but, you know, really both options put your marketing creative teams in a tough spot. Like you're just, you know, especially post launch, right? Like you just want to make a new page style. Like maybe you do a little bit of brand refresh and you want to, you know, put some new paint on things. It's a lot of work. It's now a dev project, um, at least a front end dev project in these cases. Uh, maybe you just want to make a brand new template. This is the ones we see all the time, mm -hmm. uh, landing pages. They just want to have a nav that doesn't have links in it on their landing pages, right? Because you want them to follow that, that user journey, hit the CTA that, that you really want them to. Things like that are challenging uh, in these old school CMSs and even the newer ones, you're still having to send that request out probably uh, to a, uh, a resource that can do it. You know, whether it's in-house, out-of-house, whether it's your CEO, because he's an engineer, uh, that's expensive stuff. And often it's not a priority in the whole scheme of everything else going on. So it just puts marketing teams in a tough spot when you just want to do basic things, change the layout of a component on a website, not even big stuff can kind of become big stuff uh, as you go through. Yeah. Well, this is a dumb, dumb ass question, but what is the problem? What's the problem? <laughs> uh, so the problem, like we kind of alluded to a little bit, uh, the problem, Larry, uh, is that your marketing is, is really, again, reliant on in-house engineers. And we talk about this a lot, but it's really important to understand what that means. And if you're an experienced marketer who's gone through new website builds and stuff like that before, you already know what we're talking about. Um, but you need them to help navigate, even if they're teaching you how to do it, even if they are like having to consult on it, even if you just have to have a meeting with them to find out what is and what isn't possible. Um, you need to use that in-house time or you're looking at a, a big fat retainer uh, and a global search for finding a reliable you know, resource to do that. And it's, that's a hard thing to do. Um, you know, in short, you know, marketing really isn't operating the website. Uh, and if they are, even if they're kind of steering the ship, multiple parties are involved, even for basic day-to-day -day tasks. And that's really like a bar that's way too low, right? Like that's the problem is like the day-to-day -day stuff that can't be done. Like, yeah, making a whole new page and things like that, like that, that sometimes that just requires or is better off in the hands of a designer or front end dev, whatever it might be. But day to day stuff is so important to doing good work as a marketer, uh, much less on the creative side, just being able to get things out the door that look presentable and that the company can be proud of should not be a Hercule Herculean task. We should not be looking at each other's calendars across departments to see, <laughs> hey, can, when can we get something on the books to talk about this button? Uh, that meeting should never happen. You're kind of touching on it a little bit already with like some of these examples, like more in reality, like how to, how this affects the marketing team and the website, but what are some other ones that come to mind? Yeah. You're slow. You're just a slow, <laughs> slow moving ship, you know, like, I mean, uh, just, I mean, we know that doesn't even matter what the topic is, right? Like getting a meeting on the books with, you know, valuable resources everyone's a valuable resource like how many people are in this room about a button like 
if you say the topic out loud in the agenda for the meeting, and then you look at like how long it takes to get that meeting scheduled, then you think about like hourly, what do these five people make, right? What are they yeah. doing for the company? Like your button is getting very expensive before it even happens, right? Like you can get yourself a $10,000 button if you play your cards wrong. <laughs> it can be done. Like, you know, we see that in all sorts of ways, but it's a really frustrating thing. Again, if it's like, this is a daily task, it should be a daily task and it takes weeks to get a green light on it, much less get it on the website. Yeah, exactly. I, I was just going to add on that from, from our experiences of working with our clients that the, they basically have explained to us that sometimes just get, having that meeting will take more time than the task could even take. The task may literally take minutes, but the meeting and all that stuff will take just hours, just right. collectively hours out of, to do with this one thing. Or worse, that one thing, it's just like, well, we just don't have the band. Like you have the meeting and it's just sort of like, goes in the backlog of like all the other responsibilities that people have, you know? Uh, so really like to get content out the door, you having to align so much to do it in a timely way. It takes so much planning and organizing to do something that just, you should be able to do like, Hey, we have a new thing coming out. Like, let's get it up on the website. Uh, you know, right now for a lot of people in the, in the sort of like OG world is like, we'll cram it into a template that we have. Like, that's our option. It's going to look weird. There's going to be space that shouldn't be there. Uh, the content that we have to promote it really isn't there. It's a video and we can only put an image, you know, like all those constraints that we talk about, like these are not constraints that you want. And they might not even be ones you realize that you have until you have to do these things on the fly. And that's a really frustrating thing um, for anybody because even if you, you know, move heaven and earth and get all these things aligned. Like it took a lot and all you get is a button. Um, so I, I think about that a lot. Like I think about $10,000 buttons all the time, um, you know, uh, and it's frustrating, uh, you know, for us to, it's like, sometimes we're even getting paid to do these silly things. Uh, they're not silly things, but you know, the amount of work it takes, like that we're being brought in even, like that's frustrating to us. Like we get money for it and it's frustrating. So I can't imagine how it feels on the other side of the fence. Yeah, it sounds like uh, some something I hear as well is that uh, not only are you slow because of like um, just the, you know, the work that it's required to get this done, but you're slow because of like all the red tape and process that you got to add in to make this work, right? Yep. Yeah. And like the most well-run versions of this kind of thing, like probably spent a ton of time making policies and processes just to, you know, like there's just that work doesn't get factored in either, uh, you know, to keep hitting the $10,000 button thing. It's like, there's so much hidden cost. And um, we'll get into that a little bit more as we go. Um, and then like the other part of it, you know, when you get to thinking about, it's like your vision, like we kind of alluded to a little bit before it's, it's really compromised, right? Like you end up getting some version of what you hope for. And it's probably not a good version of it. Uh, I'd like to show this, this clip, like, you know, this, the nailed it, the, the best nailed it photo I could find uh, will flash up on the screen. You're like, it really does look like that, right? Like you get a button and it doesn't hover. You get a button and it's not quite the right color. Uh, and then you're like, am I going to go back? Am I going to schedule another meeting to like, Get to see, I, I'm going to try to slack a hex code over to the dev. Uh, you know, like you, 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 all these things, like, and we, we keep using button as a process, but when you think about everything that might go into a landing page, you're talking about mobile responsiveness now, you're talking about all these things, like when is it getting tested? Uh, you know, like there's just all these hidden things that nobody is really thinking about. And they usually have to get ignored because the, the timeline or the resources aren't there. So you can end up shipping out a landing page with like that really does your brand like detriment in cases like it doesn't right. work how you expect it looks bad and that could be a potential customer's first introduction to you as a business uh and that's that sucks like there's really no other way to put it right yeah if you if you feel like when you roll out that page like oh this is this is not a banger at all. This is, this is not looking good. <laughs> yeah. But you you still have to roll it out because you that's what you have and what you got to deal with. Yeah. Uh, if you feel that way, for damn sure your your customers and leads are definitely going to feel that way as well. Yeah. Yeah. And we know too with 
customers like sometimes you know as a consumer like you don't even know what feels bad always it's maybe not even obvious but you're just like this is weird this page doesn't look like the other pages uh like the button doesn't work i was on one the other day like i wanted to buy something and the cta button didn't work and i was like i know exactly what even looked really good went went hammered that button on my phone didn't work I had to go to my desktop computer to to buy that thing. It's like, if I didn't really, really want that specific thing, like that's a sale loss for sure. So in my face right. that it didn't work on me, but uh, like as a designer, I'm like, they didn't test this button. It's too much padding. We we'll, and, and stay tuned for our series on too much padding. Cause we're going to go deep on that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love that padding. <laughs> But yeah, like essentially what's happening, right, is we're talking about like your marketing processes have tacked on too much mass. That timely webinar landing page is launching two months late. It looks like it was made in 2007. Uh, it's, it's not exactly what you're what you're looking for. Bro, when you tack on mass, you sacrifice flexibility. That's just a straight up fact. You do not want to be sacrificing all that flexibility uh, of your yeah. department. And that... That, that gets into, uh, uh, you know, another part. Hi, hi, do you have any thoughts on, on cultivation of mass? <laughs> yeah, at some point you got to stop cultivating and you got to start harvesting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, you know, in, in short, like on the harvesting front of things, like it's not the best headspace to make like great creative work when you have all these like uh, competing interests, especially when Todd, your resident overworked dev, uh, you know, call out to Mountain Dew that's probably still powering devs of uh, coast to coast. You know, he's casting a death stare at you just because you're just hoping to, to get a, a little bit cooler CTA button or like you're hoping to upload a new graphic onto your, to your landing page. Hopefully you can do that in your CMS, but you get the idea. Like these subtle changes, the things that are important on the creative side, the things that might be really important to your, your click-through rates or making actual sales, making actual money, are, are really like putting you in a tough, like tough, tough spot. And, you know, it's just like, it's not fun. And we are talking about creative work and like, it's hard to put a dollar value on fun. But if you don't have the space to have some fun and it's not a good collaboration back and forth and everyone's not on board because they don't have time, they maybe don't care because they, they have three other departments that are making similar requests of their time. It's, it's really... Now on them, like, and we hear it all the time, it's like adversarial things happen and it's just like, no one really wins and you don't make sales. Like that's a bad use of time in, in website world. Yeah. And then when you're not having fun, like Todd, even, Todd might want to do a really good job. He probably right. ultimately wants to do a good job, but given the constraints and all this stuff and him being overworked and doing other things as well, like he's just going to slap it on like. Because that's the best as he can do at that time. And right. that's what you're going to get. You're not going to get the best of Todd, which is unfortunate. Yep. And you end up like after, you know, your Wednesday happy hour kind of ends with something like something, you know, like. Spontaneous, flexible, easygoing. Flexible and easygoing. <laughs> and Todd, Todd wants absolutely none of that conversation. I can promise <laughs> you. <laughs> He's going to order another round for himself for sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> But, you know, these examples that you've been sharing and we've been talking about, I, I know like we've been talking mostly around kind of like the frustrations and processes and overall the quality of work. But most importantly to a business, like it's definitely going to cost them money, right? They're just base, base, dealing with all these things. You're going to be just burning money like a in a pile like the Joker. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, jokes aside, we're talking about the dreaded silos here, right? Like you hear them across all sorts of business. Uh, different disciplines uh, and departments in business. But like, to me, the silos take on a little bit of a different meaning. Like they're obviously different departments. So they're in some ways, literal silos, but what we're really talking about is like what we just kind of hit on, like jokingly in the, the happy hour scenario where it's like, it's, you're getting a division in your creative process. Like people are not on the same page. Some people just feel like they're getting tasks thrown at them. It's hard to actually collaborate and no one really feels like their opinions valuable and you're not getting the most out of your talent. Like this happens with really talented people. It's not a talent issue. Uh, like you said, it's like everyone wants to do a really good job, but it's like, hey, do a really good job. They think it's just a button and it doesn't matter because they're not looking at the same marketing metrics that you are. They have totally different things they're working off of. And like you really get into this part where like nobody really wants to engage 
on these things uh, that actually matter. And it's like, you know, the unspoken, you know, truth in a lot of organizations. And it's, it is a shame because again, most of the time people want to do really good work and it's just not the environment for it. Um, you know, like it, it's just not, uh, and that the bigger that meeting gets, right. The more people that kind of feel that vibe in the room, uh, the more people that roll their eyes when they get that invite, you know, it's like, you know, Hey, landing page discussion, you know, it's like, you know, Todd, Todd is thinking about taking his first sick day in like 14 years, uh, you know, like for those meetings. So, um, you know, just want to be mindful of that. And like, it even gets in sometimes, like depending on how your company works, like what's the budget on this, like either internally or externally, if you have to go out, right. Like you go outside of the organization, your CFO, you know, or whoever plays that role in your organization has to play this. Like they now need to get an explanation of this. Like they have five minutes to make this decision, uh, you know, and you're kind of pitching this thing that sounds small, but you know, is big. Um, and now we're just, you know, now we're in a point where I'm decide budgets, we're having to decide what's the priority now at the CTO, CFO, CEO level. Like, is this really what our, our three or four people or even two people should be spending their time meeting about versus these other things? And meanwhile, as the marketer or whatever, you're just like, I just desperately want the website to do its job. Like, you know, like you're just, you're just dying for that. And that's a hard, it's a hard priority thing to win, even if you might be right in the whole scheme of things over product needs, uh, over bugs, like with people that are paying money or something for your software. Um, it's a difficult thing. And again, a lot of times you're just talking about things that really should be a day-to-day -day task that you can own. And I was just going to say, just a shameless plug for another episode, like for this particular thing, and a lot of what we talked about in terms of these marketing challenges, we'll get into it in another episode. So go ahead and subscribe and get notified when that, that baby pops up. Yeah, we're trying to trying to overlap a lot of these as much as possible just to talk about the realities of these things, like the realities of the meetings that happen, which don't have anything to do with us necessarily, except for when we're in those, uh, they don't necessarily have to do anything with Webflow. But you, you know, we're obviously, you can eliminate a lot of this noise. You can regain control of your website. You can make digital experiences that are interesting to you again. Um, and, you know, I think that that is the most exciting part uh, about using a platform that kind of opens up the doors, even if it just gets rid of a couple of these types of things for you um, that you're doing over and over. Um, your design cycle is a week instead of, you know, a month. If you have a really good process right now, like a month is probably like very ambitious sounding to some of the people in the audience. Like we know that uh, we've been in situations where a month would be a dream turnaround for a new landing page or something like that. So, um, you know, and it's frustrating. Yeah, some of our clients, so, yeah, some of our clients we've told them like, yeah, we could probably knock that out in like this much time. And they just like, they just can't accept it. They don't understand like how, like, wait, you can do what in what amount of time? That's, that's unreal. Yeah. And yeah. And more importantly, it's like talking about the speed of things always sounds like great, but like what it really does is like, if you have a month, if you're planning accordingly, you have a month to roll out new things like this, maybe it's a week or whatever, is like the quality is great. It's not just mm -hmm. done. Like that's the bar. That's, you know, that's the bar a lot is like, can we just get this done? You know, <laughs> like, like just get a functional thing out. And it's like, your designers are not excited by this, right? Like no one is excited by this. At the end of the day, like, you know, you're just left sort of like, getting ready to hit send on that email. And all you're doing is just it's like, is it, is the website even worth like, you know, the marketing juice? Is it like, is it the juice worth the squeeze, right? Like to even mm -hmm. get this done, it's like, well, just like type a text link. And you, you just look at this like insane looking website that looks really old. Like when you see websites like that, oftentimes that's what happened, right? Where they broke out of what their template could do, or they're just like, they're just making sacrifices you know, you're losing any sort of design value. You're losing, you know, the function that you hope for. It's not really getting attention because it's just like, they're just trying to get things done. Um, and that's a low, like, that's not the bar that anyone should be aiming at, especially on the creative side of, of the house, right? Like no one's inspired by just getting things out, you know, like, yeah, uh, it's probably time to figure out a different, different sort of uh, path to using your website. Cause it, it can't be that you don't. And for far too many organizations, like they're just not touching their website.
Yeah, I, did, I, I think um, we'll touch on this a little bit too uh, in, in our nugs portion, but I think like a lot of these like these products and just organizations in general, they don't see websites the way that you and I at the minimum see, but like I think really great like web designers and developers see is that it's not a static thing. It's, it's never a done thing. It's a living, breathing organism and you have to treat it as such uh, or else it will die and just, yeah, just not flourish. So, um, but that's just a little early nug for folks who have made it this far. We talk about it. It's like, it's not a billboard. It's not a printed document. And that's like, that's how they get treated. Like we launched our new website. I hope it's still relevant in six months. <laughs> you know, right. you know, like, uh, like that's in, and the reason that that behavior exists is for all the things that we just hit on. Right. It's like, people are just like, I don't have the energy to like, you know, your response is usually like, didn't we just launch a new website? It's like six months ago. <laughs> it's like, that's a long time to just like, you know, there's no changes. We have no new changes. Yeah, uh, but you see that you see that happening all the time. Kind of help people make sense of all this. It's, it's such a big thing, yeah. You know, like, and we're trying to cram all this in into like a digestible kind of like a content for folks. We're obviously going to make like a series based around this, so we can dive yep. into those things a little bit more. But just any other example that you could quickly think of? Yeah, I mean, we'll, like we'll go deep on this one, but um, you know just organizing data and content, like a lot of stuff we've hit on are like front end examples of, you know, making a visual change or something like that. But like, you don't have any control over the organization of your data because that's a database, right? And marketers, marketers and databases are not things that you usually like see in one, you know, one place, but with, you know, newer CMSs, especially visual ones like Webflow, like you can just, you can organize that database. It's right within your website. It's not somewhere else, not on a back end. Um, you know, you don't need to uh, FTP into anything, you know, like to, to get access to those things. So, um, you know, that's a big one is just like being able to organize and structure your content, uh, make changes quickly, sunset pages uh, in addition to making new ones. And, you know, the other one that comes to mind that we've kind of been talking around is, is like the sort of silent, like uh, most unfortunate part of it is just all opportunities that are lost because the cycle's too long or just because people don't have the energy to like even ask, like they know going in already, right? They're like, no one's going to green light this. Like it's too, it's too big of a deal. We don't have enough time. I already know they're working on a product launch, you know? So like you already know, and like those opportunities never even get discussed. Like people don't even know what could have happened from, you know, like a marketing standpoint, because like people are just like, yeah, no, nobody's going to be on board with that. I think an example that um, folks probably don't even realize uh, that really helps to encapsulate how disjointed all of this can be and how it leads to problems is probably the most simplest and most important thing to the website is, is hosting. You got to get that, get that baby live somehow. Yeah. And most of these platforms and tools they don't even self host. You got to do that somewhere else. And imagine a marketing team, like over time, you know, talking about websites being an organic thing, like organizations are organic, people come and go in marketing teams. And you might need to know, like, you might have to do something without hosting. Or like, like, do you remember who hosts our actual website? Yeah. 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 We've, we've had that where we've asked clients, like, hey, we need to, you know, you got to turn that off. And they're like, oh, man. That, I wonder who we're even using right now for that. <laughs> yeah, nobody's here anymore that like did that yeah. when we launched the website or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah, yeah but for... this small, simple thing can feel disjointed. Like everything on top of it, you know, it's going to be dis disjointed. Yeah. And a lot of stuff like that, like delays launches because no one's mm -hmm. thought about it. They're just like, we did all the work. And it's like, <laughs> nothing's going live without knowledge of those things. And again, having it all in one place and even not having to spend the time vetting different hosts, like, is this going to grow with us? Is this going to scale? Like, that's a whole different product, like, you know, sort of vetting process just to find who's the best host for you. Like, or you pick one you're not, you don't really know, like you just pick the best one you can, like before the buzzer, you know, like that type of stuff. And these have obviously massive implications on your, your speed of your website. Uh, not to mention just the sheer fact of not being able to launch without that in place. Right. And I'm going to seamlessly transition us into our next point, because we're talking about it 
uh, in this way. But now that we have different, you know, parts to this website from the hosting to everything else, you're probably paying subscriptions for all of these. It's costing you money. And as the world's greatest boss uh, once said, Michael Scott, more money, more problems. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just a frustrating thing. Like these processes, like they, you go through all of these things and we talked about like opportunities lost and we talked about the speed of things. We talked about how much money might be spent through different products and things. Like a lot of times an incoming employee will just pick the thing they're familiar with, which only had to do with the last website they worked on, not necessarily this one. Like there's merit to that. We understand why that happens, but you just end up cobbling together like a sort of Frankenstein's monster of a website. And the worst part is like all this effort, like it ends up sort of looking worse because you've compromised what you hoped it might look like. Uh, You've compromised functionality. You didn't even make some things that you wanted to in that kind of lost opportunity bucket. So you do all this work, you, you go through all these meetings, you go through spending all this money, vetting all these products. And like what actually happens is not that your website looks and performs great. Like that's the most frustrating part. It's not even you do all this work. You end up just getting this like huge mass of stuff that like one person understood, but the other person didn't. Uh, like in you're like halfway through executing four different good ideas, you know, that, that, that just never come to fruition. And eventually, uh, you spent all this money, like rebuilding your website three years ago or whatever. And it's just like, it's just easier to start over. Right. So now you have another large ticket, uh, website rebuild that you have to get approval for. Even if you, everyone's like totally on board with that, it's like, you're starting this process over again. Like, what are you doing to prevent it going forward? Um, it's, it's, it's just crazy, uh, to have to constantly put through that because that's not really marketing like in a day-to-day way or an ongoing way, which is ultimately what you want to get into. It's like, we hear things like marketing machine or whatever, but it is kind of true in case of the website, like things should be starting to get automated at these two and three year marks, if not sooner, not like we need to start over, like you're losing all that effort and you're not getting anything out of it. Like you said, it's like, usually it looks much worse than when you started after years of work, nothing more frustrating, uh, at least from the designer side of things, like nothing more frustrating than that kind of a, like three year cycle of a website. Like it should be really coming into its own at that like two, three year mark. Um, not just in terms of how it looks, but people understanding how it works and how to leverage it as much as possible. Yeah, no, that makes all so much sense. And I hope like folks who are watching this can understand like, you know, all the challenges and frustration that you've been dealing with, like there's a lot of, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of reasons why. And hopefully today's episode, as we dive into issues with like these different CMSs out there, like the traditional ones and these head, these newer headless ones, uh, really kind of show, shows you like there's constraints that are good and there's constraints that are bad. And you're dealing with all the bad constraints. That's causing you a lot of not only headache, but it's causing your business money. Um, and yeah, so another shameless plug. I think this is like the hundredth one I've done today, but I'm going to go ahead and shamelessly plug Webflow as a great solution for this. There's obvious, obviously other challenges outside of just the CMS could you as a marketer and marketing team have other things to deal with from an organizational standpoint. Um, but just from a tool that might help a lot with this. If when you are going through that cycle of having to redo your website or you want to get out of this like circle of hell that is working with these CMSs, uh, we would recommend Webflow. We think it makes a lot of sense, but Matt, do you want to like quickly touch on why, you know, why we found that Webflow has helped? What kind of popped in my head as you were talking about that is the fact that, you know, like a lot of people watching the show think rightfully so like we're coming from a designer perspective um we are you know designers uh, you know professionally so we're kind of thinking about that but really when we were doing only brand work um simply for the fact that we did not want to build websites on the platforms that were available or that we were aware of at the time like we had built on a lot of legacy like older CMS platforms, uh, your WordPresses, your Squares, uh, Squarespaces, your Wixes, what have you, like 
And we were just, we had just decided like, this is not a good enough experience, um, much less like the, the platform for our clients. So, you know, that's just not something we sold. So that's always, I think the best, most personal way, at least for, from our perspective of explaining is like, it really came from a purely business standpoint for us. Mm -hmm. And when we discovered Webflow, it opened up way more than we were ever hoping we'd be able to do. Like we, we knew that we could design great websites. We knew that we had that in our tool bag and we had that experience, but like we had just decided not to sell it. And then this turned it to a point where like, this is the main thing we want to sell mm -hmm. because it's great for our clients. There is a learning curve like there is with every platform, but it's nowhere near and you're able to do so much more. Um, and it's just like, it's just the type of thing that pays for itself uh, so quickly in a lot of those invisible ways we talked about. So for me, and like broadly speaking, it's that like, obviously we can nerd out from a designer perspective, but what it opens the door to possible, like we talked earlier, you're like you're talking about what you can get done, how fast, like, yes, a lot of speed is possible because uh, of the way that Webflow is structured and how easy things are, especially for designers to get their work done, not, having to need the dev uh, to be involved at all, uh, be able mm -hmm. to see that vision all the way through and, and get that, get the right, get the right looking uh, cake at the end of it. Uh, uh, you know, like that stuff is all possible, but the, the speed part is just a, an aspect of it. The speed part for me opens up what you can do on the same or similar timelines to what you had before to just get stuff done. It's like, now we're able to take your brand and the website experience to a point that would have cost like hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe in some cases, right? Like depending right. on, on your needs in the past, like for a much more accessible price. So for us, that gets to like a mission vision of like Huck Finch kind of thing, where it's like, we want to just make the website look, look a little bit better <laughs> than we sort of left it. And I think, you know, we didn't talk about it in those terms when we weren't building websites, but it was kind of that, like, I don't want to put like bad looking websites out to the world. Like, right. it's just was not inspiring to us. So Webflow kind of helped us find that inspiration in the web design development world, not just from what it looks like, but to the fact that people can really own their website and they don't have to redo it in a couple of years. Uh, you know, they can get trained up by us or, or videos on the internet or whatever uh, and really own their website. So obviously we can go on and on about that. Uh, for a long time and the, yeah. the, the, the emphasis of the show probably comes from that, but um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the really that important are. part. Yeah. I mean, that's the really important part. It's like we're web flow nerds, but it's, it's like the tool to, to getting better looking website and digital experiences out into the world. Um, that's what it, it kind of does for us, you know, and for our clients by way of us. And I think that's what gets us excited enough to, have an insane YouTube show about it and, and talk about it each week. Right. Yeah. Um, and I think I'll, I'll, I'll uh, go full circle here where we talk about arbitrary uh, constraints um, and constraints in general, but I think with Webflow, just our, you know, origin story with it is that it, there was that constraint of that. We didn't want to you build websites and offer it as a service if we can't do it in the right way. And it did, and it was a the constraint for us was always how can we balance design with functionality, um, and functionality meaning how can we ensure that our customers can own this website? So, uh, and yep. I think having this philosophy has helped us, and not helped us, but helped our customers overcome a lot of these challenges that um, we've t we touched on today. So, yep. uh, with that though, I'm going to say we're going to wrap it up on our main event today of kind of these challenges with these CMSs and also offered in another nug prematurely there and why you should check out Webflow <laughs> and how it can help you overcome these. But before we get into all of our spicy nugs that we got for you, we're going to quickly open up a can and uh, I'm going to come in hot today. <laughs> I'm coming in hot. I got that neck thing going. Uh, and so the context is I am redoing my, my, my home office. Like we work remotely. Um, and we spent a lot of time in our offices, uh, and I've just been doing mine. I was like, you know, on Pinterest looking around, I was like, what should a home office look like? Like I'm not, clearly not an interior designer. I don't know what I'm doing. And then I, I just like look, you know, type it in 
my, my design aesthetic is mid-century is what I enjoy. So I was like, mid-century, home office designs. And the, the photos that they have out there are fucking absurd. Like, they're <laughs> absolutely insane. It's just like, it looks like a doctor's office. What they're asking you to do, like, <laughs> hey, throw in a couch, throw in a couple of chairs. I was like, I, I am not going to be seeing patients. What is, what is this? <laughs> this is your midday nap, man. Like, you got to, like... You're going hard. You're knocking out Webflow websites. You gotta, you gotta hop on that Chase Lounge. Uh, you know, think some thoughts. I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I had a similar experience. We, like, we built a house. You know, like everyone else on Earth during the pandemic. And I had these same things. I just like, I just gave up. Like, the office was just a blank slate when it got done because I was like, <laughs> I, I can't, I can't take on uh, this this kind of thought process. Uh, I'm going to end up with like five couches and 10 bookcases and uh, nothing to set on these things. Uh, yeah, it, it's wild. Yeah, I'm just like looking on like, they all have shelves and they all have shit from like, it looks like World Market. I was like, I don't want to go to World Market and buy like 20 <laughs> random things like a like a woven basket or a weird <laughs> rock fish bone skeleton. It's like the weirdest fucking things that are on there. I was like, this is insane. This is this is just clutter. <laughs> yeah. But that's, that's like my worst. Here. Yeah. That's like my worst nightmare is like having stuff on shelves and whatnot. where just like, it looks like it's super meaningful to you, but like, you're like, Oh no, I just, I just picked this up at world market over the weekend. I've never been to Africa in spite of my <laughs> uh, like 15 uh, elephant motifs behind me. It's like, so you're just really into elephants. I'm like, no, not, not, not really. Like yeah, I had to put something on these shelves. <laughs> <laughs> It's like I spent eight Wait. grand on these shelves. I'm not not about to not pop a few like you know wooden wooden creatures on there. Uh, but yeah, uh, totally understand that. In an unexpected, uh, I'm gonna open up a, a can real quickly on just AirPods. They don't fit my ears. It drives me crazy. <laughs> I, I really have nothing to add from that. But like this whole episode, like I promise you, uh, like uh, that I'm not insane. I, I just. They keep almost falling out of my ears. So that's it. I'm just, uh, I've been infuriated uh, with, with these, these headphones, great as they are since the, uh, since the early days. <laughs> the, uh, the solution is get, get bigger ears. My ears are pretty yeah. big. I have like, talking about elephants, I think I have like pretty elephant-esque ears. So they fit me perfectly. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, the overhead that's stuff. The overhead ones are rough on me because they really they feel, it feels like my head's being crushed in a vice. Yeah, it's just it's just Apple design, like just like passively telling me I have weird ears. They're like, hey man, these work for like eighty percent of the world. Like there should be like a weird ears like uh, CTA at the bottom. It's like just charge me like another two hundred dollars. I don't care. Give me that. Give me them weird ear sets. Uh, anyway, I I digress. I digress. I could, <laughs> we could do a whole series of me hating on uh, these headphones. <laughs> and to which we will eventually, but we'll, we'll have to wait until after we drop some some nugs. So that's where we yeah. are right now. <laughs> We've dropped a few throughout this episode already. So uh, you've probably been able to Easter egg those throughout. Uh, pretty easy to catch those since we've literally said, here's a nug for you. <laughs> uh, so That's the main way right, so, them for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so like, let's start with some nugs. So Matt, do you have a, a nug that you want to share with folks? Yeah, sure. Like, you know, the 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 thing that comes to mind for me kind of related to today's content is like you'll you'll hear us, it'll seem like we're hating on templates a little bit, but there's a time and a place for them. And a big problem with templates is that the wrong ones get chosen. So, you know, like we're building sites from scratch almost all the time, but you know, like we'll recommend that people use a template if they have a certain budget or they're just, they're a brand new business. Like this is maybe we're not you know, like, this is maybe not the time for a custom website for you yet. Hit us up in a year or two when you kind of have that, that budget or you know exactly what you need your website to use or whatever. But you know, like one of the, the, the nug that I would drop today is like to really not look at uh, templates just from the one that visually looks really good to you at first, because all that stock imagery or graphics or whatever are probably going to be swapped out anyway. And a lot of good looking templates look good because of the content that's put into them, which is placeholder content. 
Yeah, so those go those go away or you end up having to spend a bunch of money to sort of create your version of those. It's totally fine if you have to do all these things, but knowing that going in. So I always tell people like, take a look at the template and base it on how well it handles the type of content that you're currently making and are definitely going to make in the next year to 18 months. So if it's just going to be blog, like make sure that the blog template even, it's like, they're not all the same. Like if you want to have a subscribe module on the right, because like the only thing your marketing team and your company cares about is collecting email addresses, make sure that that's in there because the moment you're missing one of those little modules or components, you're going to have to hire somebody to make that, um, even if it's within that template. So start with a big list, a big ass boring spreadsheet of like the things that you need your website to do and have content lead you to the best template for that. Um, and not just the one that looks really great. And you can, you can get a lot out of a good template or a half our yeah. Slack channel is like, check out this website and, you know, like, but we do them all the time and we know like, Hey, we don't have that 3d rotating globe, uh, image. Like we're not going to be using that. And that's the main part of why that template looks good. So those right. kind of window dressing things are really not going to move the needle for you in that day to day marketing way that we talk about all the time. So start with the boring stuff. Start with the fundamentals uh, as uh, Coach uh, Popovich of the NBA Spurs, I'm sure, would say. Uh, But it really is true because you want this to kind of be your digital house for as long as it can be, right? So make sure that it can serve your immediate needs. And when you get to the part where you need a custom, like, you know, holler at your boys. We'll help you out from there. But templates can serve a really great purpose if you understand the right constraints uh that you know we've talked about that all episode and the the most important needs it just needs to serve the two or three best needs and sometimes that's content so start there sometimes that's you have great photos but you don't have any graphics how how is that going to look in this particular template so work with what you've got when you're using a template and you can you can get a great looking website out of it that that does its job really well yeah that's a great nug and i think that one rolls into a couple that I, i had in mind uh, one I already mentioned earlier, which is that this website is a living, breathing organism. It, you should never treat it as a static thing. Um, and that connects well with what you just said. Like you have to think about not only is this template, serve, can it serve my purpose today, but can it serve, serve my purpose like a year from now, two years from now? Because uh, you might want to be making changes to some of these things and adding to it. And you realize that like, I can't add that the way I want to, to this template. So I'm going to have to Frankenstein this together, which then leads you to have to add to your marketing stack. Um, and which is the other piece of other nug that I wanted to get into is that you should be stacking pancakes, not your marketing tools. And a big reason why that, that might end up happening is due to the CMS that you're using and that it can't do what you need it to do. And you need to go and add something to it. And now, in order to do one critically important thing, you need four or five different tools. And for the next one, you need four or five different tools. And you end up finding yourself duplicating things and you're spending money that you don't have. So uh, the, the wisdom there is, you know, take a look at your CMS and everything that's connected to it from a stack standpoint and ask yourself, like, can we consolidate this somehow? Like, if we can't, then maybe this isn't the right CMS for us because you we're spending way too much money outside of this. Like you might realize that like, if we just were able to consolidate all this stuff down, it might just be worth it to hire Huck Finch or whomever to redo our website in Webflow because the money spent there, it's less than what would have cost to have them do the website. So um, yeah, those are a couple, couple nugs there for, for folks. Yeah. Great ones. And uh, yeah. So with that, I think we could all agree this was a banger of an episode, the, the crust Absolutely. of episode. Another one. Yeah. What is that? Is that DJ Khaled? We just need to, can we, can we afford him to just yell on another one? Like, all through I think we could go on Cameo, yeah. right? If hopefully, if he's on Cameo, we can pay him whatever the amount and have yeah. him just say that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So again, you've made it through the end because you're digging, you're digging the vibe, you're feeling it, you're feeling what we're putting out there, or you, you know, just forgot to turn this off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, either way you're we're here. just as grateful uh, yeah. Leaving us on. Yeah. <laughs> either way you're here so go ahead and uh, show some love by subscribing uh, hitting that like button uh, 
add to the comments. Like, you know, we're, we're all constantly thinking of content that we can th be talking about as, as relates to this, but we wanted to make the content, you know, tailored to you and what your needs are. So put yep. in, write a comment and we'll cover that topic as it relates to uh, Webflow and design. Um, but yeah, with that, we're going to go ahead and just call it. This is it. We're done. Yeah. And we're we're doing it. We're done. Yeah. See you Share next with time. your friends, your family, yeah. your loved yeah. ones, your enemies. Faith and all. the next time you eat a sandwich and you're eating, you're wondering if that crust, you want to eat that crust or not, make sure to tell people it's the healthy part. So that you is left healthy part. Another part. <laughs> it's been confirmed. <laughs> another nug there for you. So, all right. That's it. Later, folks. Fade to black.